Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you by Kativ Technologies. I'm Nigel Mbike, your host for today and one of the customer success managers here at Kativ Technologies. And today I'm joined by Eric Paul. How's it going, Eric? Good morning. Going good. Nice. That's great to hear. So today, Eric Paul is going to be going over some automating dimensions on drawing, specifically in Autodesk Inventor, for those of you who don't know which application he's going to be going through. Um, that's part of the ABA experience, right? We want to be able to show you workflows, features, so on and so forth in all of the products in the product, or all of the products within the product design and manufacturing collection. So today, Eric's going to be going over some VBA, not iLogic today. That's right. Going to change it up a little bit. Right, so we're going to go into another method of automating, um, specifically on drawings. Eric's going to show how to do that using VBA. And for those of you who don't know what that is, um, VB is? It's a programming language. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of a little bit older. And the reason I'm going to go over that today is kind of show you it's got a built-in debugger. And that can be very helpful when you're a little bit confused on what you need to do and you're uh, deep in the coding and deep into the iLogic or not the iLogic, the Inventor API. Um, I'll sh I'll show you I'll show you why soon. There you go, and just a couple of reasons why you want to be doing this. Um, first and foremost, right, to eliminate some of those repetitive tasks. Um, maybe you build a lot of models that are very very similar and are just different in shape, size, etc. Um, you know, to be able to automate the actual two D production drawings or maybe quoting, um, to be able to automate the creation of those. Um, documents is very key in terms of, uh, you know, shortening that design and quoting process. And a lot of our customers have used this. We've, Eric's working on a ton of products for customers utilizing this exact thing. So um, really excited about today's AVA. Uh, if you do have any questions, go ahead and type them into the GoToWebinar chat panel at any time. Um, but with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Eric, and let's get started. All right. So today, we're going to be covering creating dimensions on drawings specifically uh, for both parts and assemblies that we bring in. Um, as part of this, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. And the way I'm going to show you today is going to be based on the uh, attributes that you can add to um, the, say, faces, edges of uh, your part. And this is something that was made significantly easier in 2019. So I'm going to be showing that. Uh, if you don't have 2019, I'll show you what else you can do um, using this same process. Um, and lastly, we're going to be going over the VBA editor a little bit. And I'll show you some of the, there's not a lot of benefits in VBA um, over the iLogic. Um, I, I like the VB.NET language uh, much, much more. Um, but the VBA editor has a debugger, um, which can really help you uh, understand the, the objects and models that you're dealing with here. So I'm going to go ahead and go straight into it. And I'm going to show you how we're going to add um, these kind of notes to faces and edges in a model. So I've got this very extravagant part here that you can see. And the idea is, let's say I've got you know my drawing here, and I always want to know, what is the width of this part? My drawing should always have a width here. So we know it's going to be based off of this edge and this edge. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just mark those as edges I wanted to mention, and when we bring it up in the drawing here, it goes ahead and does it on its own. So what I'll go is over here to my part again. And all we have to do to make a little note on this edge or this face is we right click it. We go down to the assign name button here. Choose that and say front face. Go ahead and click OK. And now you can see, hey, it's got a little label here. Now, where you'll find all your notes after you start making them is under your iLogic tab. So if you go to your, if your, your iLogic tab isn't showing up for you, you're going to want to go up to the Manage button up here and click on the iLogic browser. And that'll bring up your iLogic tab. 
Now, as you can see here, I've already got some others marked and you can say whether you want them visible or not. And so I've already got this left side and right side marked because that's the ones I'm going to be dimensioning to today. So now that we kind of have this, you know, oh, real quick, if you don't have Inventor 2019, you can still mark these objects. Uh, there's a guy at Autodesk uh, named Brian Eakins. He made this wonderful add-on that helps you manage these attributes. Uh, it's called Attribute Helper. Uh, if you go and uh, search for Attribute Helper, you can find his blog and his code uh, is available for free download. It's open source. Well, I don't know if it's open source, but it's uh, the code is available um, to see so you can see what you're getting yourself into. And uh, you can just install it as an add-in, and you can do basically the same thing there. You click on the Attribute Helper, you right-click on a face, on a edge, a vertex, what have you, and you can just add it to um, the list of attributes. Um, but I won't go over that full workflow today. Just going to go over the Inventor 2019 back to the drawing. OK, so now that I've got my part set up the way I want it, right? Left face, right face, and this front face really, eh, it's not doing anything for me. I'm gonna make it go away because I don't want it to clutter up everything. We do want to make sure that you're on the drawing itself once we start looking for the VBA editor. And that's gonna be under your tools bar and this VBA editor button. And once I've got that up, uh, you can see here over on the left-hand side, um, it's got all the three different things I have open. Uh, if I move this a bit, let me resize it. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, you can see I've got three objects, three files open at the bottom here. And these three document projects, they match those. So right now I'm on, it automatically opens to whatever file you have open. Uh, in this case, it's the model version of the uh, drawing. And you can see I've also got the assembly version and that's the one I have marked out here. So for right now, we'll go ahead and start on the model. And before I actually start showing you the code, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint slide to kind of give you a high level overview of what we're going to try to do. So in order to get at and dimension these, uh, there's a few steps we have to go through. Uh, we have to find these objects now. Now that we put the little tag on them, how do we find them? So what we have to do is we have to start at the file level, find the active sheet, look for the specific view that the model is on. And then once we find the model, we looked for that named object. Now, once we have that edge, once that's been found, we have to send each, we have to go backwards through the whole thing, setting up that edge to its parent. So in this case, we find the named mod object on the model and then we have to promote that edge to the view. And then we have to promote that edge to the active sheet. And once it's on the sheet level, we can create the dimension. You go ahead and go back to the code. And with that in mind, I'll start making my way through this and you'll kind of see what's going on. So again, we're starting at the file level. And so, we're calling out this application dot active document. And this is going to be the open file. It's going to be the current one we have selected in Inventor. After that, we're going to look for the active sheet. If we had, let me bring up Inventor in the background. If we had, you know, multiple sheets, we want to make sure we're selecting the sheet that's currently active. And space here. Once we're at that sheet, 
we have to select the correct view because in this case, I've got two different views. So we have to make sure um, that we're setting it to this first view and not the second view. And once we have the view, we need to reference the specific model that's on that view. And lastly, we have a little shortcut to get at the general dimensions that are part of the sheet. So once we have that set up, what we'll want to do is on the model, there is uh, this thing called the attribute manager. So the tag that we put on the edge, the left and right tag, those are attributes. That's what Inventor calls them. And there's actually three levels to that tag. And if you're looking, it, let's say you, you hear about attribute manager, you want to look into it a little bit more. The best way to go about looking at some of this stuff is actually the inventor help. It's actually a very robust help section for the inventor API. And what you'll want to do is you go up into this corner, go down to the help, and over to the programming and API help. And expanded very large on my screen here. Uh, so what I did is I copied the um, attribute manager tag over there, because I knew it was called something like that. So I go ahead and do a search for attribute manager. And I'm going to take this second one here, this attribute manager object. And I'm going to take a look at all the things it can do now. And this process of looking through the objects and finding what things they can do, this is going to be something you're going to be doing very often. Um, so I do want to make sure uh, that you guys kind of get an example of this. And this help section uh, is also on the Autodesk website. So if you were to look for this uh, in Google, chances are one of the first things you'll pick up is the uh, Autodesk um, page for this. And uh, it also has a search function that you can use fairly similar to this. Um, so you can see that one of the options here with the attribute manager object is this find objects. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on this to see, well, if I'm trying to find objects, what do you need from me? And so it's saying, OK, for the finding an object, you need to have the attribute name, uh, attribute set name. You have to have the attribute name and the attribute value. So in my case, um, with uh, setting the tag in the model, let me just go back to the model real quick. This left and right, that's actually the value of these attributes. And so if I'm going back into here and I read through what the different parameters are for, it's saying, yes, you need to have an attribute set name. And if you know what it is, you can enter it. But if you just want to look for everything, you can put this asterisk. Because what this is is basically a search function. It's going to look through everything um, that it can find given these criteria. And it's going to spit back all the ones it finds um, using this criteria. So let's say I made a few other tags on there, which also had a value of left. Maybe the attribute name was different. The set name was different. But I put wildcard, wildcard, left. It would return maybe two, maybe three. Um, so it's not going to find a single thing. It's going to find a group. Now, it might turn out that it, there's only one with that criteria, but it's always going to send you back a group as this object collection. So let me go back to the code, and we can see what we did with that here. So we're saying, OK, using the model document, which we set up earlier, and the attribute manager for that model document, let's find the objects using these search criteria. The first two, wildcard. 
but the value is going to be left. And what that's doing is sending it to this object collection. And because we know we've only put one left item in, we're going to say whichever the first one you find in that object collection, that's going to be our new edge. That's going to be the one that we're looking for. And what we have below that, that's just the version for right. So it's everything the same here, except we're looking for right instead of left. And so I put a two on it. It's second edge. OK, so now if I go back to the PowerPoint, we have made our way down from the file, active sheet, the view, model. Now we've got our named object. So what we're going to have to start doing now is with that named object, we need to start promoting it to the model, the view, and the active sheet before we can create that dimension. All right, so let me show you how we're going to promote it to the model. Let me have this in the background. OK. So um, sorry, we don't need to promote it to the model. It's on the model. It's found it on the model. It's next going up to view. So on this view, we're saying we need to create the view part of uh, its, its different objects, uh, different options on the object is it has this feature called drawing curves, which will create a drawing curve for the view based on the model. So basically, this is just the uh, drawing curves is, is what Inventor calls it to make something go from a model object uh, to a view object, specifically something like a, a boundary, like a edge or a face. So very simply, it's O view, which was the, the view we had set up in the very beginning, drawing curves, and we're going to make it based off of this edge one that we found from the search. And similarly to how it's going to give back um, multiple things. It's going to collect as a group. So it's going to set it into this O draw view curves. And we're, again, going to select the first one of that group. And we're going to now call it the draw curve one. So we promoted it from edge to draw curve. And again, we're going to do the exact same thing for the right-hand side. And the next step is going to be very similar. We're going from the view to the sheet. And what Inventor calls this, the, the, um, the sheet object that's going to be a line, is a geometry intent. And so what we've got here is we're setting up a geometry intent. And we're saying, OK, now we have to go to the sheet level. And let's use the command create geometry intent. And it's going to be based off of this last thing we created, the draw curve. All right, so this is the command we use to promote it from view to sheet. OK, so um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to jump ahead a little bit. So now we've got the two sides on the sheet. We have this um, geometry intent one, which will be our left side, geometry intent two. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump down and we're going to look at what is this general dimension add linear going to ask of us. So I'm going to do a quick search back in our help. We're going to look for general dimension. And we're going to look at the general dimension object. And let's see here. We've got to find our add linear. Where did it go? Uh, oh. 
got the wrong spot. So the general dimensions, it's going to be plural. General dimensions, not general dimension. And yes, there's a difference. And here's a little shortcut. So parent object, general dimensions. Um, here we go. Now we're on the general dimensions object. And here's the different options that we can do with this object. We can add an angular, we can add diameter dimension, uh, radius. And in this case, we want to add linear dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and we're going to take a look at what's it asking for. And part of what I want to do today is show you how to read this. So when you see these, um, uh, these bold and italicized, um, this is the um, name of the variable that it's giving it, and it's saying what type of variable it should be. So it's saying it's expecting a text origin point, and it kind of explains that down here at the text origin. This is going to be the position of the text of the dimension. So where the dimension says, hey, this is you know three inches long, where it says that, that is this first point. The next thing it's expecting is at least one geometry intent. You remember that's the sheet level item that we created, and it needs at least one. Now, the next thing you'll see here is that this one is in brackets. So what that means is it's an optional item. You don't have to have it in order for this function to work. It might not do what you want it to without adding more information, but the function can do things with a single point and a single geometry intent. So let's say we know we had a, uh, an edge and you just wanted to dimension um, from one end to the edge to the other end of the edge. That's fine. You can do that using just one intent. In our case, we have two intents, and so we'll put in the left side and then the right side. And then you can see it has a few other options here as well. We can do the type of dimension, and what it means by that it explains is, you know, do we want it to be a horizontal dimension, a vertical dimension, maybe a lined dimension if it's a uh, something that's sideways and um, at an angle and you want to show it like that. Um, the next thing is how the arrowheads are placed. Do you want it inside or outside? And if you have specific dimension styles that you use, you can set that here. And if you want to place this on a particular layer, you can set that as well. Yeah, so pretty much all of the options you have when creating a dimension in Inventor, you know, when you're actually creating one, mm -hmm. this is what it's doing in the background, right? Intent one would be like the first thing you click. Intent two would be like the second thing you click, um, so on and so forth. Exactly. Yeah. So if it, 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 it's a good idea to just kind of imagine like you were doing this um, in Inventor, and that's really what we're doing here. You know, we're, we're saying, hey, we want to make a dimension between this intent and that intent. And then, you know, the third thing you do is you place where that text box is going to be. And then you can, you know, make your changes on the styles and stuff. Exactly. All right. So with this in mind, now that we know what it's looking for, we're going to go back to the code. And we're going to say, OK, so I have these two geometry intents. Now I know I need to make a point that we need to place the text on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new variable called text point, and it's going to be this point 2D type. So you remember in the help, it's saying it needs to be point 2D. And so um, one of the cool things that views do that can be really helpful with this is you can use some of the data in the view to help place objects. So in this case, it's very readable um, by English. Um, so you can understand this Y position 
we want to be at the top of the view. So what do I mean by that? The Y position that is this way, we want it to just be somewhere at this Y position, right? And so what I have for the X position is, okay, I wanna start on the left-hand side of the view, and then I want to go halfway through the width of the view. And so I go to, starting at the X at zero, I go to the left-hand side of the view, and then I go halfway through the width. All right, let me go back through here. Okay, so we have the X position set, we have the Y position set. Oh, thank you, Inventor. Yes, I need to save this. Mm -hmm. um, and now what we need to do is we need to turn these um, numbers into an actual point 2D. And so this is where we need to use a special command from Inventor. Um, using their transient geometry object, we're going to create a point 2D. And so this just translates an X position as a number and a Y position as a number into this point 2D object, which is what Inventor is expecting um, as a point. All right, and so now that we have the geometry intent of the left and right, we have the point where the text is going to go, we're going to go ahead and say, okay, now we're actually ready to add a linear dimension. And it's going to be at the text point, and it's going to start at this geometry intent and go to this geometry intent. And so let me go ahead and actually run the code. And there's a few different ways we can go about doing this. Since we're in the editor, let me just double check I'm on the correct page here. Yeah, on my part. Up here in the corner, you'll notice there is a run, a stop button, and a break in the middle if you know something's happening with the code, it's in some sort of loop you need to get out of. So I'm gonna go ahead and say run. And in the background, it ran. And hey, there we go. And I'm noticing it's a little bit too, it, it's, that's not very readable, right? And so it was very explicit about, okay, the Y dimension at the very top of the view, set it there. It's like, well, it did it, but that's not exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go back into my code, find that Y position. So here's that Y position. Okay, so we don't just want top, we want top and a little bit of space. So we'll add some sort of arbitrary number here and see what that gives us. And let me put this off to the side so we can see this running this time. Hit run, and there we go. Now we've got something that's much more readable. But as soon as I do that, you're gonna see another issue. All this does is place dimensions and it's gonna keep placing dimensions. So if we make changes, you know, you're gonna to have to go in and delete these one by one. That's a pain. So what I did and I'll leave it on here for just a sec so that you guys can copy this down. I made this quick little thing to delete all the dimensions. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm looking at the document, looking at the sheet, looking at all the dimensions on the sheet, and then for each one that I find, I'm deleting it. And again, this is going to be recorded and going back to you, so uh, you, know, you, can, you can take a look at this later. Uh, but basically, this just deletes all the dimensions that it finds on the sheet. So I'll go ahead and run this, and off they go. Okay, now let's say you're starting to run into trouble with part of your code. Um, one of the reasons I'm showing you this today is to show you some of the debugging options in this VBA editor. So one of the things we can do is create what's called a stop. We can click over here on the left-hand side 
and it'll stop on this line. So, you know, maybe we're finding it's not quite picking something up. Um, what we can do is create a stop before the error happens. And when we hit run, the code will run up to this point. It won't run the line. And so it's, it's, it's run everything up to that. And one of the very, very, very cool and helpful things it does is has this locals window. And if you'll notice, this is all the variables that we've created up above. Um, so we've got the draw doc, the sheet, the view, model doc, general dimensions. And what you can do here is you can go into the draw doc, which is this drawing document, and you can kind of see everything that this is built out of. And there's actually a giant PDF that explains everything um, that's in all of these objects. Um, you can find that, I believe it's in um, the help on program files uh, in, under your inventor installation, but you can find this online as well. Just look for the uh, inventor API object model. And so this can be super, super helpful for trying to figure out, you know, hey, when are things going wrong? When are things going right? Um, so in this case, um, let's say I'm, I'm having trouble picking up, um, you know, this drawing curve. And so what you can do is now that we've stopped it, you can actually run this line by line. There's this option step into, which will just go to the next line. And now we can say, okay, let's look at what were the searched results for this find objects. Okay, so we find this O objects down here. We can expand this and say, hey, it found one item. Okay, that's good. That's what we're looking for. We can click on the item and we can say, okay, it's an edge type and here's all the values for it. So this can be super helpful as you're trying to figure out, hey, what do I need next? Or, you know, I'm looking for a specific thing. Um, like maybe you've got the edge and now you're trying to figure out, hey, what's the geometry of this? Where does it start? Where does it end? Um, so you can look for keywords like geometry and start looking at, hey, there's the start point, there's the end point, and you can do stuff with these values then. Yep. All right. What about those super awesome text boxes, Eric? What was as like a debugging tool? Yeah, that. So that's something you can use in. I, I use that more in iLogic as debugger. Um, the idea is you can go in and say message box and maybe just a hello or the last value. Um, maybe you're trying to say, um, since you can't get this this full thing in um, iLogic, maybe you can say, okay, I think it picked up something, so what's the edge one dot name, for instance? Uh, I guess it doesn't have name. Uh, it's a bad uh, idea, but you got to kind of get the idea. Um, that way you can display out in a message box. And what you searched. What yeah. you searched for, um, and you can do that. So you can say, okay, it's crashing somewhere in here. So you can start with the message box at the top, and you keep moving it in between lines until you know it stops displaying. And then you'll know, oh, okay, it's on that line that we're having the issue. Okay, so that is for models on the drawing. What I'm going to show you next is how to do this when you have an assembly on the drawing. Um, so I'm going to go over the differences now between what you do for a model and for an assembly. So if I go back to PowerPoint here, it's very similar. The difference is instead of going from you know, view to model, we now have the assembly level we need to go through. And so we have to go from view to assembly to model, and then again to the named object. And then a big difference is as we're coming back, we don't want to go from the model to the assembly, because in this case, we have now an occurrence. So it's not just the model, it's that specific, specific occurrence of the model in the assembly. Because you could have more than one of the same model in a particular assembly. Exactly. 
All right, so let me go back to here, and we've got the same thing just as an assembly. I just put the single part in, and let me go ahead and go to the code for this. All right, so now instead of this model project, I want to go to the assembly project. And once in here, you can see I've got it named the assembly. And very similarly, we've got the file, the sheet, the view. And now, instead of the model, you can see I commented this out, we want the assembly document. OK? And so um, we've got all this set up very similar to the last one. It's just now there's a difference of we can't just go straight to the model and start looking for the attributes on the model. We have to say, OK, on this assembly document, we need to go through all of the referenced models. OK, so this is what this is doing. I've got a little setup here to say, OK, go through each of the referenced models. So it's from 0 to however many there are. And in this case, since I know there's only one, we can kind of cheat, get around it, and say, OK, we're just going to pick up the first one, and that's going to be our model document. And then this is going to be the same. It's find any object um, using the search, using this criteria, and then put it to that edge. right? And then again, here's our other difference. This is the main other difference, is that we need to look for all of the occurrences on the assembly. And again, we're going to cheat since we know there's only one occurrence. And we're going to set that occurrence uh, to a variable. And we're going to say, OK, we found on this model that this exists. So here's this edge one, right? And what we're going to need to do to go from the model to the um, occurrence is that we need to create a proxy. So this is going to move us from the occurrence to the assembly level. And um, what we do here is um, we create the variables for the two proxies. You can see it's called edge proxy instead of just edge. And there's a command within the occurrence object that says create geometry proxy. And so what's expecting is, OK, give me the boundary on the model, and then give me an empty variable, and I'll fill it in with the proxy on the assembly of this. So it's just moving it from model to assembly. OK? And now the rest it basically goes the same, except instead of using this model reference, we're now using this assembly reference. And so you can see down here, we've got the drawing curve, which is the view um, line, right? That's going to be based off of this proxy. And then we're going from view to sheet. And then this is identical, because we already used up the proxy. We're now saying, OK, that view item, let's make that a sheet item. OK, and then we've got this um, same setup for the um, x and y position. And it's all going to be set the same. So again, we can run this. And there we have it. Um, so there's another way we can run this, right? Let's say we don't always want to be going you know, into the editor, hit run. So one of the ways you can go is to the macros. And you can say, OK, I want to use this document project assembly and use the create dimension assembly macro. Or since we're automating things, we can create an iLogic rule to do this. And what we do for that is over on the left-hand side, we want to use this run other tab. And there's one called run macro. And so you can see, let me put it underneath here. When I double click run macro, 
what it's expecting is the project name, module name, and then the macro name. So let me show you what I mean by that. I have the editor. Oh, right, it doesn't like having those up at the same time. Um, OK, I can cheat this. Uh, cancel. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can have the VBA editor uh, in the background. And let's look at this. Uh, it won't let me. Uh, let's see. Can move, I... You can't. You have to move the inventor screen over. I think I can shrink that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll move the inventor screen over. There we go. OK. So in this case, you can see project name. That's this, this document project. Module name. In this case, I named it module two. It could be this document or functions. It's anything from this level. And then the macro name which in this case was the um, subroutine, the create dimension assembly. Um, again, so that's create dimension assembly there. All right, so those are some of the ways that you can you know, have that run, because um, then you can combine this with other things. So maybe you, know, you have something that first scales the model and then it runs the dimensioning tool, and you can have an iLogic um, thing that you know fires off different macros. You can even have a combination of of iLogic routines and then run a macro, and you can just kind of uh, mash it all together there. Okay, so that's the basics for you know creating those dimensions. Um, you know, even um, let's say you didn't want it on you know this view one. What you could do is just very quickly, I'll go back to the editor. And let's say back on the model, let's say we didn't want view one. We actually wanted view two, right? We can set this to number two. And if I run that, you can see it's now on this view two. Um, the one thing I'll say uh, as you're looking at what to choose to dimension between, is that the view needs to have a very clear um, line of sight of the item. So for instance, if I wanted to mark the back face, or this left-hand face uh, to dimension, that wouldn't work in this case because it doesn't have a clear view of it. So do be very careful that you know, what you're tagging is something that your view is going to have a really nice line of sight of. And that helps. I've seen some. Uh... I've seen you do this before and yes. make that mistake a couple times. You're like, oh, I can't see it. That's yep. why. So, yep, yep. All right. I think that's just about it for questions. Again, thank you, everybody, for joining us this week for Autodesk Virtual Academy. Uh, be on the lookout next week. We're going to be doing another AVA on creating your tool libraries in Autodesk HSM. I know that's uh, very key for a lot of people who do their machine work in-house, right? You want to be able to configure HSM to use the same tools you're using on the actual shop floor. So um, be on the lookout for that. That's again next week, Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks again, Eric, for being with us today. Yep. Um, and uh, we'll see you all soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.